The Legacy of Wisdom Project gathers and publishes answers to many of humanity's most pressing questions from some of our most experienced and profound leaders. As lifespans are increasing, what can we do to live the extra time that we will have more wisely? Well, you know, Erickson used to talk about what he called a moratorium. Um, when he talked about youth and identity, that very often people did not gain a sense of identity and of what their life, life direction was to be immediately. There would be a period when you didn't know what to do. Um, for some of us, that's called college. <laughs> but, um, and when he wrote about Luther, that period was, was time spent in a monastery uh, before he rebelled against uh, the church as it was at that time. It was a moratorium. Um, one of the things that is very striking to me, and I'm going to take back some of what I said about this list of yours, is a lot of people need a moratorium. When they come to the end of the tasks that have defined their life for the last 40 years, and they finish that, and they don't know what to do next. It may be that there needs to be an extended transition. A lot of people travel, wander around, go to school, learn new things, um, sometimes I use the metaphor of a house. Now, when you say you have a house and you decide to, quote, add a room, right? What you discover if you say to build a family room on is, in fact, the way every room in the house is used is going to change. Um, and Ultimately, we're going to understand that these years that people didn't expect to have are going to change kindergarten. They're going to change the way the entire life cycle is lived, which was going through a transition. Well, when I think of that house, I imagine instead of sticking something onto the edge, what if you could open it up and create an atrium in the middle? An atrium with doors that go in many directions. And pause in that atrium with the sky above you and think about what you want to do next. And my guess is that that's very important. You know people are rushed. People are worried about their careers. They work long hours. They're checking their email all the time. And then they retire, and they want to know what they're going to do next immediately. Maybe that's the time to take a cruise, take a year off. I, You know, I'm horrified at the idea that someone might get a house next to a golf course and play golf for 20 years of retirement. That sounds like something out of Dante. But it doesn't hurt to play golf for six months or so. Um, we live lives in which everything works to discourage reflection. And I think the way to find out what you're going to do, what your mission is, how to make yourself useful to the world, is to take some time for reflection. Yeah, this is, this is another thing. I don't know how it fits with your questions. Um, 
on this business of, of realizing that you're in a new kind of space. Um, it struck me that there are really three brand new affirmations that you have to find a way to make. Um, you have to accept the fact that you're going to die. I'm on the whole in favor of death. Um, I think good stories have endings and that death is one of the things that make us stop and evaluate our lives and understand who we are. Uh, I wrote a, I got invited to write a piece for a, uh, a book that was a collection of uh, pieces called Sacred Trusts. Uh, and I think, what, what is a sacred trust? The ocean is a sacred trust. We must not pollute it. The, the atmosphere is a sacred trust. Human lives. I think death is a sacred trust. So one thing I would say is at a certain point you realize that you are going to die and you embrace and accept that fact. But at the same time, you have to embrace the fact that you're still alive. You can't sit there saying, it's time for me to die. Well, the Bible says, uh, what is it, three score and ten, Psalm 90, the days of a man's life. Well, that's, you know, that's uh, 70 years. Are you going to stop living just because you happen to be still alive at 70? So, not only is there this challenge to accept the reality of death, there's a challenge to accept the reality that you're still alive and you've got to do something with that. And you've got to look after it. I mean, that's where the health stuff comes in. Uh, exercise. Um, dealing with bad habits, things like that. All right. And the third thing is this one that I was just speaking about. That love remains central, but every love is different. You have to rediscover and reaffirm the loves that you've been following for many years. 